Welcome to the second section of Harnessing the Power of D3, where we will be building a bar graph with D3 using JSON data. We will begin by learning how to import JSON data using D3 functions. We will then attach this data to elements within the document object model, more commonly known as the DOM. Next, we will use SVG to build a basic bar graph. Finally, we will customize this bar graph by adding interactivity, setting the color, setting a scale and attaching axes, and adding some basic labels. In this first video, we will learn how to import JSON data. We will set up a very basic page and add a reference to the D3 library, work with JSON data, then import JSON data and begin working with it. First, let's jump over to our terminal window, creating a folder for your bar graph called D3 bar graph by typing the following on the command line mkdir d3 dash bar dash graph all of our code for this section including an index.html file json data and our javascript file which will contain most of our code will live in this folder now open up the d3 bar graph folder in your text editor or ide Within this folder, create a new file and name it index.html. This file will be where we reference all of our necessary resources and files such as the D3 library. We will also set up the div which will hold our D3 visualization here. Add the following code to your index.html file. This file is available in the course resources. This file is very simple at this point as it simply sets up an HTML document with a title D3 bar graph, a reference to the latest D3 source code, and a reference to our bar graph JavaScript file where all of our D3 code will be written. We will be working with the latest release of D3 in this course, version 4. D3 v4 is much more modular than previous releases of D3. This means that you do not need to download or reference the entire library if you only need certain modules within the library. For example, if you only needed to work with D3 axes functions, you could simply download or reference the D3 dash axes module. Throughout this course, we will make use of many different modules within the D3 library, so we will simply reference the entire library. The reference to bargraph.js at the bottom of the body points to our future D3 code. Let's add this file and begin writing some code. Add bargraph.js to the D3 bar graph folder and open up this file in your text editor. It's now time to write our first line of D3 code. Let's start by using a D3 selector to grab our body element. You will find that D3 is a very semantic library. So D3.selectBody does exactly what it sounds like. It selects the body element. Add .append h1 to this line to append an h1 element. Finally, add .text let's build a bar graph to this line. Save this file and open index.html in your browser. You should see Let's build a bar graph in your browser. We have just successfully written our first D3 code. Now let's follow the message printed on the screen and begin visualizing some data. Replace the contents of bargraph.js with the following code, available in the course resources. For our bar graph, we are going to use a hypothetical data set covering daily sales at a lemonade stand. Let's work with some D3 functions to display this data on the screen. We begin by typing d3.select body.selectAll p. We learned earlier that this chain of functions will use D3 to select the body element and select all to select each p or paragraph element. But wait, we don't have any paragraphs in our HTML. That's true, but we soon will once we import our data. Type the following lines dot data sales data dot enter dot append p dot data of sales data uses the d3 data function to pull in our sales data 
dot enter begins to describe what we'll do when each piece of data, each member of our sales data array in this case, is encountered. Finally, dot append p declares that we want to use D3 to add a paragraph element to the body for each member of the sales data array. We now should have seven paragraph elements within our body, one for each day of the week. However, if we were to view the page in the browser, we would not yet see anything. We first need to add some content to these paragraphs. Add the following line after dot append p. Dot text, function of d, which is the element of data from our sales data array. Then return this string where we append d.day, which is that data element's day property. Bestseller was d.bestseller. There were d.sales, total sales. This line simply uses the d3 text function to set the contents of each paragraph. The function within text takes a first parameter which maps to the data we have imported. In other words, d represents each member of the sales data array. Let's save this file and view it in our browser. We now see a sales summary for each day of the week. We currently have our data hard-coded within bargraph.js. However, this is not how one would build a production-ready application. Let's make a few changes so we can properly import our JSON data from its own file. First, we will need to set up a very basic server for our page to function properly. Otherwise, our browser will throw cross-origin errors when we attempt to import JSON data from a separate file. On the command line, within our project folder, d3 bar graph, type python-m simple http server. This will set up a very simple local server. You can now reach your page by navigating to localhost colon 8000 in the browser. Note, you will see the port number on the command line. If it's not 8000, simply navigate to whatever it happens to be. For example, localhost colon 3000. Your page should look and feel exactly the same, but now we can safely take advantage of D3's ability to import JSON files. Open up bargraph.js and make the following changes. Remove the sales data array. Update the D3 code to the following. The d3.json function is used to import JSON data from an external source. This function takes a callback function, which runs after the data has been imported. The contents of this function should look familiar, as the code is the same as previously. We now simply need to create the salesdata.json file. Create a new file called salesdata.json and paste the following JSON array in. This again is available in the course resources. For saving this file, refresh your browser, and you should see the same list of paragraphs, but we are now pulling data from a separate JSON file. 